Hey, Alton here from Half Bass Blog, and today I would like to show you my new field watch. It's right here, and it's a Casio G-Shock. Hey everybody, Alton here and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about this watch. This is a GA2110SU-3AER Casio G-Shock, known as the Casio. This is a rugged, somehow retro and yet futuristic, cool G-Shock. Now I did an unboxing just a couple weeks ago and I posted up my initial impressions and my initial impressions were great. I was instantly taken with the packaging, the cool metal tin that it comes in, which I don't know, you could put candies in there, cufflinks, or just if you're me, throw it in a closet and forget about it for a couple of years. But right out the gate, I was super impressed with it. Now I did have a black version of this watch and I just couldn't read the thing. But right out of the gate, I could tell that this green version would be extremely legible. But before we get into my impressions after two weeks on wearing this watch, and I've worn it quite a bit, let's just talk about the specifications for a second. So right out of the gate, one of the coolest features about this G-Shock is the dimensions. It is 45.4 millimeters by 48.5 millimeters which is a fairly big watch, to be honest. But the really cool thing is when you flip it over, it's only 11.8 millimeters thick, which means that this watch is extremely unobtrusive. It could slip under a shirt cuff if you wanted to. It's not exactly formal, but if that's your thing, that floats your boat, go for it. The dimensions on this thing are provided by this case. This case is something called a carbon core guard which actually is hard to say five times fast carbon core guard it's a reinforced plastic case and that means that they can take out the metal that's inside of these normally the protective cage if you will and and so with this new technology g-shock is coming out with some pretty slim and cool looking watches so this watch sort of takes in inspiration from one of the very first G-Shocks, the DW5000C. I'd throw up a picture, but I don't want to get sued. So you can check that out for yourself. That was more roundish and it wasn't symmetrical on all sides from what I can tell, but there's sort of a bit of a throwback to that very first watch. Of course, this G-Shock is Annie Digi. It's got the LED screen, which is sometimes hard to show but it has a fantastic feature. Throw on the light. No, under my lights, you can't see it. But throw on that light, and in the darkness, you will be able to read your watch at any time of day, which I really appreciate it. It's got a world time, a 1 100th stopwatch. It's got timer, five alarms, hour chime, auto calendar. It's got double LED backlight, a three-year warranty, and 200 meters of water resistance, as you would expect. Now, for me here in Canada, this is going for 150 Canadian dollars. The original three went for 130. So obviously Casio has realized that they have something pretty great on their hands and they have decided to jack up the price. And I guess I really can't blame them, although I wouldn't mind saving that $20. Now, one of the really cool things about this G-Shock is the octagonal case. It, there's just something about it that draws the eye. It's different from your regular square. It's, it's just different in many ways. And people call this the Cassie Oak because it reminds them of the Royal Oak. So taking a quicker look at the dial, we see that we have indices around the border in green and tan, if you notice that. And we see a day complication right there at the nine. And of course, Casio and G-Shock printed at the 12. At the bottom, we have some functions printed out as well as a uh, water rating at the three. The hour and minute hands are quite legible. They actually are loomed. 
and it has a digital display which is really hard to pick up on the camera. It's actually hard to photograph as well. One of the things I particularly like about this new G-Shock is just how legible it is. In fact, when I look at it in just the right light, it seems as if the glass disappears. Actually, a funny story. My wife, I was sitting on the couch, my wife came up to me and she looked really concerned. She looked down at my watch. She said, oh no, it's gone. And I said, what's gone? She pointed to my watch and she thought the crystal had actually disappeared. It has no AR coating as far as I know. It's not sapphire. There's nothing fancy about it. But there's just something about this dial. It is so dang legible. It's got your typical push buttons on either side. And these push buttons are actually pretty easy to use. Right here we have the backlight button. And you'll notice that these hour and minute hands are aligned right now. And that's because what I've done is in order to see the digital screen, you hold down the light button and you press this button and it moves. You see it just kind of jumped there <laughs> because it's already out of place. And right now it is 1055. And so that's kind of where they would be anyway. If they were at a different part of the dial, you'd see them kind of spin around and put on a show. And that is one of the things I like about this watch is that just setting it is a lot of fun because you set the digital time and then you watch the hour and the minute hand spin. You watch the day complication chug itself around. It's actually just, I don't know, if you're a watch nerd like me, it's a lot of fun. So let's talk about what I like about this watch. First of all, I like that there are all kinds of different colorways. There's green, yellow, red, black, black and white. There are going to be, I'm sure, many, many other colors. I'm sure they'll do a blue one. There's a gorgeous camo version of this. I also like that it's nice and lightweight. It's comfortable, extremely thin, sits on the wrist really well. And if you have, I'd say, a six and a half inch wrist or bigger, this is going to fit you really well. Some guys who have really, really big wrists might find that these kind of push off from your wrist, but uh, I have an eight inch wrist and it fits me just fine. So it's comfortable, it's thin, it's light, and it's also extremely legible. At least this version is. And at least if we're talking about the analog portion of this watch. Finally, what I like about this watch is that it's just fun and it's cool. It's, it's fun to set the time and watch those hands sort of spin around into the correct place. And it's fun to swap parts. I actually took my 5600, grabbed the black strap from that, and swapped it onto this G-Shock. And it looked really cool, if I don't say so myself. However, I couldn't get the green strap on the 5600. It just, the, it just didn't line up quite the right way. And it wasn't a great fit either way. So I don't know if that's something I'd recommend, but I thought I'd give it a try. I would love to get a camo version and start swapping parts. Putting a camo bezel on this watch would be really neat with maybe the black strap. I can see tons of potential for people doing that. And I know people are modding them in, in different colorways already. So they're just fun and they're cool. Now, what would I change about this watch? Well, first of all, I wouldn't particularly change this for me, but if you had a smaller wrist, you would find this to be probably a little too big for you. But that's probably the case for most G-Shocks in that situation. Um, the other big thing is this screen is just so small. I mean, it gets the job done, but if I don't have my reading glasses on, I, I, can't, I can't read that screen. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that has trouble with that. And then some colors are just hard to, as we've said, hard to see. So that could be a con depending on which colorway you get. Obviously, this one is extremely legible. I'm sure the yellow one is even more so. But some of them will just be difficult to read in low light situations. And finally, these things are dang addictive. I mean, I want them all. I really do. But what am I going to do with six uh, Cassioke G-Shocks? I mean, there's only so many watches you can bring into the house. At least that's what my wife tells me. So, yeah, these are some of the pros and cons. But I, I really want to end this video by talking about where this watch is going to find its place in my collection. So 
I brought along a couple watches for us today. This here is my very first mechanical watch. I got it about a year and a half ago. It's called an Orient Defender. It doesn't hack, it doesn't hand wind, but it's a really cool watch. It has a nice brushed case. It definitely has that field watch aesthetic, maybe a little bit of Flieger in there too. I threw it on a Barton canvas strap. This is my go-to camping watch. Like many of you, I love to get outdoors. I've got a camper. I like to drag it into the woods, spend a week in the woods, campfires, hiking, going around the lake. This is the watch that I always bring. And I've come to realize that I love field watches because I've got all kinds of them. I, I love this Hamilton day date, khaki day date, but I don't bring this camping. And the reason for that is, well, I'm not a Rolex Tudor kind of guy. I don't have that kind of cash, but these Hamiltons are sort of on my upper range in terms of price. And, and they're fantastic watches, but they're a little fragile, at least in the finish. Like this is brushed, but this is polished. And if you see any Hamilton, they all seem to have the same glossy polished bezel and they're all scratched up after a certain amount of time. So I don't wear this one in the woods. I have another field watch here, which is a really cool one. I have worn this one in the woods from time to time. It's a Belova with, it's actually a quartz, but it has the coolest sweeping hand. But again, it's kind of got a nice, classy, polished cushion case. I don't want to beat it up in the woods. I don't want to knock it around into some branches or drag it off a rock by accident or perhaps forget to screw in the crown and get water in it. So I kind of just always stick with this bad boy, but no longer because I think when I go camping, I'm bringing two watches. I'm going to bring the Orient and I'm going to bring the Cassioke. There's just something about this Cassioke that says to me, I belong in the woods. I need to go camping. I need to go hiking. I can take any river you accidentally fall into. I can go to the beach and get wet without any issue. I can be red anywhere. I've got a timer. I've got all kinds of functionality. Whatever you need when you're out in the woods, I've got it. It gets dark. There's a loom. It gets really dark. I've got a backlight. This is going to be, along with my Orient Defender, my new camping, hiking, outdoor kind of watch. I get it. It's kind of weird to say that a G-Shock could be a field watch, but if you think about it, it has 24 hours time. It's 200 meters water resistant and it's extremely legible. So, I mean, what else could you need when you're out in the forest, in the field or the stream? This will do just nicely in my book. Before we go, I just want to let you know that I picked up this Casio G-Shock at MyWristCheck.com. Jason over at Wrist Check in Orangeville, Ontario is a great guy to work with. He has great customer service and he offers competitive pricing. In fact, he's had a sale going on 20% off for quite a while now. So if you're looking for a watch and you're in the area, I would absolutely hit them up. He has fast shipping and he does a great job. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Please like and subscribe if you did or don't. I'm not your dad. Have a great day, everyone.